Well, congratulations. How are you feeling? Feeling amazing. Feeling what it feels like uh, to win a fight, you know? Very excited. Uh, obviously, it was a decision. I always go for wins, so the decision part's unfortunate, but I stuck to the game plan, kept doing the right things. Um, I think I showed a lot of improvement in this fight that people hadn't seen prior, and hopefully I'll keep doing that. I think I've cemented my place in the top 15, and I don't plan on leaving. Is this the kind of fight that you expected from her? Did you expect to, I know you say you want the finish, but did you expect that you may have to go the three rounds with her? Absolutely. She's a durable fighter. Andrea's not a pushover. I knew that when I called her out. I knew this was going to be a competitive fight, and uh, I think I went in there and showed that maybe it wasn't so competitive, you know, but very excited. She did a good job in, in various positions, and I was ready for high volume, um, high-level striking, and potential new wrestling that she's included, too. So I was ready for it all and went out there and showed that I was ready for it all. Was there anything about her that surprised you? Um, you know, her grappling was good, but uh, no, honestly, I expected everything that was there. Um, I expected her to be coming up forward a little bit more than she did, to be honest, uh, but everything else was on point. When do you want to get back in there? Uh, May. Let's get me in there soon. You know, I was joking with them. I was like, you're giving me a week suspension. Now I got to wait two weeks. You know, I'm ready to get back in there anytime. I stay ready. I stay lean. I never like stop sparring, never stop training, whether I'm at home visiting or not. I'm always training. Um, so I'm ready to get in there again fast. I do not like having this two fights a year thing. I want three. I want four. I want five. Um, and a lot of people don't know I'm not the one that makes those decisions. Right. But I'll stay ready so that I can have as many fights as possible this year. Do you have a name you'd like to call out? Uh, not yet. Coaches and I are going to go back and look, but obviously I'd like someone in the top 15 that's open, and that's always hard to figure out. You know, everybody's getting matched up, but I'm ready to go soon. Anybody that we can get in there that's in that top 15 to 10 area, I'm ready to go. And you mentioned it's difficult sometimes. Which is more important, having the top 15 opponent or having the date that you want? I think the date, you know, I could have a top 15 opponent and it'd be in December and I wouldn't be too happy, you know. I want to have a fight in May, June, and as long as I'm getting paid the same, I don't really care who's in front of me, to be honest. And last question, probably most important one, did you bring any pickles? I have my cards. Everybody already took my pickles. I brought three jars and they're gone. <laughs> but you guys can order them. I ship anywhere, prowlerpickles.com. Which is your favorite? Uh, I actually like the bread and butter and the sweet ones, but I'm a, I'm a sugar fanatic, so that's probably why. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Miranda, congratulations. Thank um, you. Just uh, want to ask, uh, obviously you trained with her for a little bit. How did she feel, you know, in the cage for real as opposed to training speed? Uh, I felt better. You know, it's been a few years. I've improved a ton, gotten a lot better at striking, putting it all together, everything. Uh, and as I said prior, I think we did two rounds of actual sparring together before and heard some of her interviews where she's like, I, I don't really put it in all when I'm sparring, da, da, da. And I'm like, well, none of us do. But I felt invincible in there. You know, I felt like I was unable to be touched. I know I got touched a couple times, but I could go back and name like two or three times that I got hit that I actually noticed. You know, I felt amazing and... Uh, Felt better than I expected to feel against Andrea. Now, usually you rock your Top Gun aviators, but you don't always bring out the cowboy hat. Uh, was there <laughs> just a, you know, a little bit of gamesmanship? So you had the two cowgirls facing off with each other yesterday? Yeah, listen, I grew up on a ranch. I worked on a ranch. I'm not one of the jokes that rode a horse two days in my life. And I'm like, well, I'm a cowgirl. Like, uh, I just thought it'd be funny, you know? They want to say cowgirl versus country girl, whatever. So I thought it'd be a nice little play. I'm like, I, if anybody deserves the cowboy hat out there, I think it's me. And thought I'd just make a nice little little American friendly joke there by wearing it. Now, I think a lot of fans may not realize just how many things you have going on outside of fighting. <laughs> yes, you have sir. a full-time job. You are building the pickle business. You have an art business. I mean, when you get home on Monday, I mean, <laughs> like a lot of fighters, hey, I'm going on vacation. Just how busy are you outside of training camp and right after a fight? Pretty busy. You know, I'll be going home and shipping out packages of pickles and stuff that hopefully people have bought. Um, I'm, I'm big about fighting's not the only thing I have in my life, you know, and fighting's not going to last my whole life either. I can't be 50 fighting. So I need to have something afterwards that's ready for me and hopefully be able to make a living for my family without me having to go to a nine to five if I get hurt during a fight or or if I just decide I'm done like I don't want to be going and working as a waitress again like I was when I was 18 so trying to set up this life to where I have a lot of options and be an entrepreneur and and use my intelligence and use this platform that I have not only to do good like the auctions that I'm trying to put up with my fight gear for survivors of human trafficking and stuff but also make a business that hopefully my whole family can use to make a living someday. 
Uh, final question. With that, auctioning the gear, just uh, obviously a noble cause, but what was it that really got your attention that said, this is what I really want to, this is the cause I want to help out by selling my stuff? Yeah, listen, it's always been uh, survivors of human trafficking for the past few years for me. Um, I chose Light, which is actually based in Denver, Colorado, where I'm local right now, and it's like a legal team that supports and gets survivors out of very bad situations from custody battles to crimes that they've been forced to commit, those kind of things. So I'm big and passionate about that thing. I teach self-defense. I teach jujitsu when I can, and I'm huge about it for survivors of assault and sexual assault. And everything I do from that perspective, I want to go towards those people, the people who I can really make a difference in their lives. And if it helps one person, then I feel like I've done the best that I can. Uh, last one, just obviously having trained together with her. Any words exchanged after the fight with Andrea? Just thank you for taking this fight. I appreciate you. You're still an inspiration. You know, that's really all I said to her. Uh, she still is. Win, lose. Uh, we're going to be acquaintances tomorrow. Still have her number. I'll still probably check in on her, make sure she's good, and uh, pray for her safety and health as well. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Congratulations, Miranda, right here. Congratulations on the win. Um, I don't know if you heard after, but Joe Rogan referred to you as one of the most exciting prospects in the UFC. Yeah. Were you surprised to hear him call you a prospect? Because you've been going at this for a while now. <laughs> you know, they always throw around the words prospect and veteran, whatever uh, sounds the same. I've commentated before and know any words are there. But I have been a prospect. You know, I think they say that because I'm not in the top five. So you're basically a prospect until you get there and then you get named contender, right? And so I'm not worried about him saying that. I think I am one of the most exciting ones. I want to keep working my way up to where I get the whole contender for the belt instead of prospect. And I see that as my responsibility, not Joe's to call me something different. Where, where do you think, would the next fight be the one where you graduate to no longer being a prospect? <laughs> Depends on who you ask, I guess, you know, but I'm a veteran in the sport and I think uh, every fight shows that I'm a veteran, win or lose. And I plan on, you know, I see myself as a contender now working my way up but I'm also happy being in the UFC. It's an honor, it's a privilege, it's a, a dream come true, honestly, from the beginning for most of us who have been fighting, been training. I watched the UFC back when I was 14 years old and you know, my dad was like, you can do this one day and I literally laughed and was like, I want punched in the face and here I am, right? So I don't care what they call me, I'm here, I'm happy and I know who I am and I know how good I am. Congratulations, thank you. Thank you very much. Congrats on the big win. Thank you, sir. Awesome, you're welcome. Um, you said you felt like untouchable, and mm -hmm. I noticed you were also unrockable because that slam was hard. <laughs> yeah, the I, slam and the back fist, I know, uh, landed. The slam, I'm used to being thrown around. I don't just train with, like, little girls in training. I train with the guys. I've done college wrestling before and gotten slammed a lot harder than that's ever been. Heck, I get slammed harder than that when I'm at home wrestling around on the living room floor, you know? So it's not a problem to me. We're in the middle of a fight. It's not always going to go absolutely perfect. The, uh, the thing that's important is how I react to it, get up and keep going. And I think I did a good job of that. You know, her back fist landed, but it was, wasn't any harder than what I've gotten hit by Raquel Pennington when we're in there sparring, right? So I was ready to just keep going forward, keep focused, keep disciplined. And if you guys heard in my corner, that was a big word tonight is stay disciplined, stay disciplined. And I uh, tried to do my best with that. And touching on that, you definitely have grown in the sport and we see your maturity. You were definitely disciplined. That was it. Your jab was there. Your movement was there. So much so that she was hesitant to throw anything back. How proud of you were of your hands <laughs> that you just put in a box. That's the plan, you know? Make her not want to come forward. Make her not want to wrestle. Make her not even want to hit me because she's going to pay for it every single time she touches me. And I tried to make that the case. We knew in round three she's going to be desperate. She's going to be trying to come forward. I heard her corners, come forward, wrestle, do whatever you can. And I was looking out for it all. Maybe it was a slower pace than I desired to have in the third round, but I was ready to go and just keep doing the smart stuff not rush forward and make a mistake when I'm winning when I know I can keep winning at the the same tactics and just go hard try to seek the finish still but not make stupid mistakes excellent good stuff and last for me you mentioned the champ how awesome is it to train with someone learn have to take you know have her take you under the wing and know that her journey the ups and downs that you're like you know what I've had those too but I can see you can reach the mountaintop if you you know, stick, stick to the grind and work hard. Yeah, not only that, but the confidence, you know. It's like I know how good I do against her in training. I know um, the things that I can work on with her. I know what she's working on, what I'm working on, um, the training that we get from the same coaches to have that coach in my corner and be like, that, that coach helped make a world champion. This coach has been, you know, a world champion in jiu-jitsu. Like both my coaches are world-class coaches. All my training partners are world-class training partners. That's the reason I moved to where I'm at. That's the reason I'm doing as good as I am. 
am, you know, along with my own talent, of course, but I needed to get somewhere that could help mold me into even a better fighter. And that's what I've done, and that's what I, we keep doing every day, you know? When I go in there, it's not, oh, you're the best, let's just keep doing the same things. It's, let's learn something new. Let's keep adding on to this tool belt. And uh, I'm glad to say my tool belt is as full as it's ever been, and I'm gonna keep having to make new spots. That's awesome, congratulations, and great to surround yourself with the right people. It showed tonight, good job. Thank you, sir. Which is hotter, the spicy barbecue or the sweet fire? <laughs> the uh, spicy barbecue, actually. And my hottest pickles are the spicy dill. But that spicy barbecue is a big popular one right now. It's pretty rare. <laughs> did, was cooking always a part of your life, or did you have something that kind of pushed you into pickling? And that no, sort of like thing? homesteading, I would say. You know, I grew up where we made our own meat. We got our own milk. We had our own vegetables that we vacuum sealed. We froze. We canned. We pickled. We did all of it. So I have a lot of those kind of base talents, I guess you'd say, that, that I learned as a kid. And I decided to just take off with this one. It kind of started because I was pickling for my family during Christmas. And I was like, oh, I'm going to surprise them and bring home all these pickles I've done. And I had some people message me when I posted about it. And they they were like, would you sell any? And it's funny, amazing, honestly. Like, uh, I think it's God's just putting it in front of me. Uh, my dad and my family have mentioned before, why not start a pickling business or this or that? And then the opportunity kind of showed itself when somebody was like, would you sell some of these? And I was like, you know what? I'm going to go for this and see what it does. And it's not just me. I'm not over there just pickling all the time. You know, my, my family's helping me, and I'm hoping to just hand it over to the less busy family members uh, very soon and get FDA approved, hopefully, in the next couple months. That's awesome. What's the biggest thing that you've learned about the whole business side of things? I'm, it's, I'm sure it's tough to try to make a business as at the same time as training, but what have you learned of yourself kind of in this whole process? Yeah, honestly, I've started other LLCs and stuff before. I, I've been learning, reading books. Uh, my dad has his own business and has had for a while. He's kind of my financial junkie when it comes to going up to him and saying, all right, what do I do now? How do I do this loan or uh, work with this, you know, make it tax advantage, whatever it is. Um, I keep learning, though, just every time I start something like this this pickle thing with food and having to get FDA approved, man, lots of regulations, but I'm figuring it out slowly. And this fight came first, so I kind of pushed that over to the side for a while, and then I'll bring it back into a focus or hand it off to someone else in the family so they can make it their focus and make a living off of it until I'm done. That's awesome. Best Thank of luck you, with sir. That. Appreciate it. Thank you, everyone. I appreciate it. Have a great day.